So I think that is all that I have. And now the moment that we have all been waiting for is our senior mom moment. Um, and with that, I just want to take a couple minutes to introduce to everybody um, Emily Nelson. Um, Emily is the Director of Marketing and Communications, as many of you know. Um, she's the middle school girls and boys tennis coach, and she's someone that I call a dear friend. But most of all, she is a wonderful mom. Um, Emily has been happily married to Walt for 22 years, almost 23. Um, her senior, Luke, is 18, and he came to St. David's as a freshman. And her other son, Grady, is 14, and he's in the eighth grade. And he, I mean, yeah, he's in the eighth grade, and he came to St. David's in the sixth grade. Um, so when I asked Emily, I, um, I asked her to share just a fact or fun fact about herself. And when she sent it to me, I, I just was blown away. I just couldn't figure out how in the world she had time to do all of this. So what she shared was that Emily is a published author of four novels and currently working on her fifth. Um, and y'all, I bought the first one and I'm reading it and I read the first 80 pages and like, I couldn't put it down. So I encourage all of you to get, buy her book. It is awesome so far. Um, but just so impressive that Emily can do all that she does and still have time for that. Um, and her fun fact was that she was hundred percent gray by the age of 17. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Emily Nelson. Thanks, Courtney. Can y'all hear me okay? Um, I appreciate that. Yes, the fun fact is I am 100% gray, and it was not because I was in a plane crash my the year I turned 17. So that's another funny story for another time. But um, today I'm here to talk to you about my about Luke, um, and I just am hoping that I get through this without crying. For those that know me well, I'm an emotional person, so I'm going to do my best. So I appreciate your patience. Um, when Walt and I, um, we were so pleased when Luke was accepted to St. David's, uh, you know, as Courtney said, joining the school his freshman year. As parents, we take very, very seriously the sixth chapter of Ephesians, um, knowing that this child of ours is God's first, um, that Luke is on loan to us. And as Luke's parents, we've encouraged him to, um, to learn, to always lead, and most importantly, to love. And we were thrilled with how these three things aligned with the school's mission of faith, virtue, and knowledge. Uh, fast forward to the morning of Luke's freshman year. Um, as I snapped that first day uh, school pick, um, I got really, really emotional, um, even more emotional than the first day of pre-K drop-off. Um, there was an ache uh, that took over in my chest that morning from the realization that you know, this is it, that Walt and I only had four years left to really pour into this child, into our son, uh, before we sent him off into the world. Um, over the past four years, we've seen um, the faculty, staff, and coaches here at St. David's also really pour into our son. Walt and I are thankful for these Christ-centered individuals who have chosen to invest their time and energy into Luke's life, have helped shape and teach him, encourage, challenge, and motivate him, have gotten to really, I mean, really know him, and have never stopped caring, um, never given up on him. We have seen their work in action, always encouraging Luke to learn through, the shaping, through shaping his curiosity for knowledge helping Luke lead and do so with virtue and providing a safe space to continue to explore his faith, always choosing love. So today I'd like to spend my time sharing with you how these individuals here at St. David's have helped Luke in these three areas. The first is learn, uh, shaping his curiosity for knowledge. Mr. Boyne is a fantastic example of this for Luke. During his junior year while taking physics, we all gulped, I mean, like, <gasps> huge gulp, when Luke brought home his first test in the class. Defeated by the low score, Luke was ready to give up. He had grumbled, oh, it's too hard. I don't understand. There's no way I'm getting, he's going to kill me. This is a bad impersonation. But he had grumbled. But something that St. David's does extremely well is that they encourage students to go speak with their teachers, um, take advantage of office hours or flex. So that's what Luke did. Proverbs 1.5 says, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. During that time, Mr. Boyne took the time to figure out Luke, 
figure out how he learns and then share his love of science in a way that Luke could grasp and also learn to love. Not only did Luke end up with an A, but during those moments while working together, Luke and Mr. Boyne got to know one another, personal likes, dislikes, music, and so much more, resulting in a powerful bond, a mentor friendship. Luke may not ever use physics in his professional career since he wants to pursue sports management, but the most important takeaway for Luke, for all of us, is to never stop learning. As Confucius said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. The lesson Luke will take away from St. David's is this. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but strength. And if you are the one providing that help, that guidance, find a way to connect with the person, understand them so that the instruction you give will ignite an understanding, a joy around what they are learning, that working alongside the person is what will have the lasting impact. And that is the greatest takeaway. The second is leading, but leading virtuously. Since freshman year, Luke has served on yearbook and Mrs. Feeney has helped teach Luke and give him opportunities to lead his classmates in the creation of the annual publication. Through all the clicks of the camera, page layouts, cover designs, and serving as editor, both his junior and senior years, it has been Mrs. Feeney that has not only taught Luke the ins and outs of the process, encouraged Luke, empowered him, but she still instilled in Luke the importance of leadership, servant leadership, taking the skills learned and passing along that knowledge to his classmates, especially those younger than him, new to the yearbook staff who will become the future leaders of that class, ensuring that this time-honored tradition continues. This also carried over into sports. For those of you that know Luke, you know that sports are a huge part of his life. I mean, huge. He eats, lives, and breathes it. It's his passion. It's what fuels him. Walt and I are extremely grateful for the opportunities that Luke has had playing football, basketball, and baseball here at St. David's how his coaches have encouraged him to never put a limit on what he wants to accomplish on the field or court. Coach Kelly drove this point home as his JV basketball coach, encouraged him to always pursue his goals, passions, ideas, dreams, both on and off the court. That even if you're not the MVP, if you are willing to put in the work to really, really work hard, anything is obtainable. And that even from the sidelines, you can lead, support, lift up, encourage, and, and encourage, excuse me, and carry on your team. The way Coach Kelly really got to know Luke, saw his passion for the game, showed Luke the leadership potential he has, dropped nuggets of wisdom, and along the way built a confidence in Luke that he never had, which is something Walt and I are eternally grateful for. The confidence Luke gained through that coach-player relationship was precious and has helped shape the young man Luke is. Those nuggets of wisdom will guide his steps throughout college and in his future as a servant leader. Luke now knows that leadership opportunities are always there and has the confidence to seek them out and fulfill them. And while Luke's time on the basketball court concluded two years ago with Coach Kelly, their relationship has continued. Coach Kelly is always checking on Luke seeing how things are going, genuinely caring about the response, not just the blanket asking of, how are you? Or asking me, how's our boy Luke? He wants to stop, really wants to hear a real answer and engage in a meaningful conversation. The way Luke can pop into the admissions office and chat with Coach Kelly is special. He knows that Sean will always be there for him to listen, offer guidance, encourage, and challenge him. Coach Kelly took the time to see the potential in Luke, saw his heart, his love for the game, and that Luke was willing to put in the work. He saw someone who wants to build up, encourage, and lead their team. Coach Kelly took advantage of failed attempts and doubt and turned them into teachable learning moments that made Luke a better athlete, a better teammate, and a better leader. The biggest takeaway is that there are opportunities to lead, to be a servant leader, no matter where you are, in the classroom, on a field or court, with friends, in your home, your community. Matthew 20, 26 says, 
whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Our faculty, staff, and coaches find opportunities for not only Luke, but all the students here at St. David's to lead. Or when a student has an idea, they create a space for that leadership opportunity to be explored. The confidence it gives the students is remarkable and will serve them well as they seek leadership roles beyond their time here at St. David's. The third is love and faith. Faith is the core of St. David's School, as you all know. It is the foundation, what sets us apart. But what Walt and I have appreciated most is that Luke has been given a safe space to not only deepen the knowledge of his faith, but to explore, understand, and respectfully learn from others, which has only strengthened his relationship with Christ. Because of our Christian faith, we are called to love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 reminds us of this. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And boy, y'all, do our faculty, staff, and coaches love these students well. We have seen love from individuals like Dr. Greggs, Ms. Roof, Dr. Carriker, Ms. Keegan, Ms. Martin, and others I've mentioned already, praising Luke on a job well done, encouraging him to not give up, holding Luke accountable when he falls short, offering support when things get hard. Life in high school has not been easy. We have faced adversity. From a broken leg during a football game Luke's junior year, a senior football season cut short, challenges in certain subjects, and a lot socially. It's not been all rainbows and butterflies, for sure. And while those moments have been hard, there have been teachable lessons from each, and this is where we have seen love shine. The Nelson family firmly believes in what Paul wrote in Romans 5, 3 through 5, which states, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It has been through those times of adversity that we have really seen love in action. In addition to all the teachers and coaches coaches mentioned, Many others, like Miko, Coach T, Ryan from Focus, Ms. Barr, Mr. Carriker, Dr. Michael, Mrs. Carol Littleton, Mr. Jones, a handful of parents, and you know who you are, and some of his peers like Anissa, Paxton, and Ford, who have really loved on Luke, have taken the time to walk alongside him, love on him as he navigated those rough patches, showing love, sometimes tough love, which we're grateful for along the way. Because we firmly and wholeheartedly believe that it is through these trials and failures that Luke will grow the most, that through the love shown to him, he was able to navigate them and will also be able to extend love to others in support when they're the ones going through a rough patch. In closing, no, please, please hear me when I say this, know that the teachers here at St. David's take very seriously these three areas, that they strive for your child to learn to lead and to love. Along with Luke, they are well cared for. In two years, when Luke is home from college and we reflect on how things are going, when I blink and an additional four have passed and he's graduating and searching for his first career related job, or even six years down the road and beyond, when we see Luke continue to learn, try new things, push himself to achieve the next step in his career, when we see him take an additional leadership role meet and really get to know people, invest in their lives, help them. When we see him tackle adversity, live out his faith, choosing to love, care for people, we will think fondly about St. David's and the people who helped contribute to these areas that he is now living out on his own. We will continue to give thanks for the time and effort they spent pouring into our son. Malachi 3.3 says, He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. When a silversmith refines silver, they must hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames are the hottest so that all the impurities are burned away. The silversmith not only has to sit there holding the silver the entire time, but they must watch the silver as it's being refined. 
If they take their eyes off the silver too long in the flames, then it could be destroyed. The silversmith knows the piece is finished when they can see their own reflection in the silver. I am thankful for the faculty, staff, and coaches here at St. David's who have answered the call to do God's work and be like the silversmith, surrounding the fire and watching closely as Luke has grown during his time here at St. David's. They have sat watching, never taking their eyes off of him so that he will be ready to graduate, equipped to head off to college and tackle with God's guidance and direction, this thing called life. Thank you. Oh, Emily, thank you. That was so beautiful and awesome. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. I wish I could give you a hug through the camera. Um, but really, that was just so powerful. And I know that it spoke to so many people on this call. Um, it sure did me. So thank you for taking time to do that for us today. We really, really appreciate it.